Are you trying to leave Orange Theory Fitness, uh, but you're worried you're going to gain weight? Watch this. Our next caller is Tim from Florida. Tim, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on, guys? As always, uh, wow, this is a lot more intimidating than I thought it would be. As everybody always <laughs> I won't put that uh, on you. Uh. Yeah. Uh, so uh, really, real quick, I definitely got to give a, a, a shout out to Doug uh, um, because you know, he's, he's ruined a lot of other podcasts for me because of the quality uh, that he's put you guys in, in this studio. Uh, and, uh, to one of my former coaches, Katie Butler, a couple of you guys might know her. Uh, she's my former OTF coach, but she turned me on to you guys, uh, about a year ago. I actually listened to, started listening to one of the episodes. I was looking for a health and fitness podcast and started listening. I was like, man, what's going on here? I don't really know what this format is. I was expecting, you know, advice and all this stuff. And uh, so I kind of like I stepped away from it. And she's like, no, 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 no. She's like, give it a chance. Like, check it out. Listen. And uh, I've been I probably haven't missed an episode in about a year now. So that's awesome. uh, really appreciate it. So um, I'll dive into some background. So uh, in about 2012, 2013, I actually worked at uh, a big box gym for a little while. I was selling gym memberships. And uh, yeah, it, it worked out okay, but I had a friend of mine who was a personal trainer, brought me into the world, never really got into into it, right? Never really could find my passion for it. I always felt like, oh, this is work. This is what's going on. So I left that in about 2015. I got into to tech sales and then I into actually IT support and kind of got a little heavy. And uh, right before I moved to Florida in 2016, I got up to about 240 pounds and uh, was having to go to the bathroom a lot and was like, man, why is my, why is vision blurry and everything? Well, went to the doctor and they, they checked my blood sugar and I was off the charts, right? So they sent me to hospital, they pumped me full of IVs, and then they put me on metformin for a while. Uh, I lost about uh, 30 pounds just by changing diet and just kind of walking and everything. Still never really found my fitness lifestyle, but as, as everybody else always, a lot of times does, I yo-yo dieted, right? I tried low carb, I tried all this, tried that, and I, and I gained some of it back. And um, I, I kind of got defeated, I got lazy, and um, finally got to a point where I was starting to try again. And I was just walking, I was just been really crash dieting again. And my girlfriend decided to try to get me to try OTF. And I was like, Sure, I'll give it a try. I went in there first day and it kicked my butt, right? I barely could even run on the treadmill and uh, fell in love, signed up, did like two days a week first when I first started the membership. And then I probably got three classes in and I went unlimited. Well, I think that turned into uh, really just overdoing it for myself because I really loved the workouts. I loved being able to, to not have to go into a big box gym and be intimidated and go through and understand like, oh, I got to wait on equipment. I don't know what I'm really doing. I kind of have a background. I kind of, I think I can deadlift. I think I can do this stuff, but you know, the equipment's always there and they had benchmarks, right? It was easy for me to, to go. But really what that turned into is just really me finding out that I really just enjoyed kicking my ass, right? Um, so transform transformation challenge came one year and uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. And I did it. But I, I, you know, as you guys always said, I did it in the wrong way, right? All I did was crash diet. And by the time I was done with the transformation challenge, I had lost probably a good 15 to 20 pounds, but I did the in-body scan and I basically either barely gained any muscle or lost it all. And I really came to the realization then that it was like, this didn't work, man. I didn't get, I didn't feel like I got stronger. I was weak. I was whatever. So I was like, I, I really struggled with trying to figure out, like, could I build the body that I wanted to build at OTF, right? Um, without just always being in the cardio rut. So really what I'm trying to figure out, and, you know, since I've sent in my question, I've kind of made some, some changes based on the subsequent episodes that I listened to right after I sent in my question. They all seem to speak to me, right? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so we'll kind of go, we'll start there. And really my main question is, you know, how do I take the skills that I've learned from, you know, having a few very good coaches at OTF and transition that into weights, right? Like I'm moving into trying to move into anabolic, but 
I'm trying to move into to barbell moves, but I've always been doing dumbbell moves and body weight exercises with the TRX and stuff like that. So I'm trying to figure out how I how I take those skills and how I transfer. Okay, what weight should I start at? Yeah, so uh, the, the 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 transfer or the change is pretty straightforward. Um, uh, stop doing OTF; it's not working. For, it's not good for you. Go to traditional strength training and just start slow. Just start slow with the weights. Work by feel. You want to pick a weight that helps you that allows you to perform good technique and good form, but with a decent amount of intensity within the prescribed rep range. Maps Anabolic has a pre phase. I would start in pre phase, and I would do that for about a month. And then I would move into phase one and so on. But it's pretty straightforward. I would drop OTF completely and go 100% MAPS anabolic. And then just track your steps uh, on a daily basis. Make sure you're getting, you know, a decent amount of walking uh, throughout the day. And that's pretty much it. Very straightforward. The challenge is going to be the switch, the mental switch. That's going to be the challenge. The goal should be to get stronger, but not sacrifice form and technique, right? So you don't want to, and we, you hear us talk a lot about the importance of building strength, building metabolism up, and that's a, a good focus. But I, I sense like this kind of like, you know, concern of like, ah, uh, I'm not, a, I'm not, I haven't been deadlifting for a long time or squatting. I'm uh, maybe I don't have the best form or technique or whatever. Form and technique is everything, right? So don't be afraid that you're choosing too light of a weight uh, to get your form and technique that you're like in risk of not seeing results. You're going to see results, especially I know the format at Orange Theory. There's nothing in there that compares to a deadlift and a barbell squat. So you deadlifting and, bar, and barbell back squatting 135 pounds, which I'm, I'm pretty confident a guy like you could probably do uh, with good form and technique. Even that amount of weight is significantly different than anything you did at Orange Theory. Mm -hmm. Orange Theory is a, a rack of dumbbells that stop at like what thirty or oh no, they have the bigger dumbbells that you can use for some of the exercises. But you're not doing any big leg movements with anything more than at best a hundred pounds, right? There, everything is under that pretty much, and body weight stuff and suspension trainer. You're going to see great benefit from just barbell back squatting and deadlifting and doing it real light. Go light, go light, and get the technique down until you feel really comfortable and confident and then slowly start to build on that and trusting the process eating hit your protein intake that should be a major focus of you over all things when nutritionally is eat whole foods hit my protein intake every day consistently not every once in a while or only when you work out every single day hit that and uh, be mindful of the, the calories you consume but i think just doing that you're going to see a huge change yeah i I honestly don't think there's anything wrong too with just focusing on those big core lifts to his point in terms of like the mechanics of it, learning, it's a completely new skill. If it's something that you haven't been doing or have never done, um, it's going to require a lot of attention in terms of like uh, understanding your body in, in every incremental inch of that lift. So, you know, if you're bracing the entire time, if you're getting in a depth, if you feel like, you know, you're in any kind of like discrepancy with your joints and uh, there's a lot for you to kind of work your way through mechanically. It would, it would help a lot to maybe even have a coach or somebody, a friend or videotape even you doing these lifts uh, and then post them in our forum so we can kind of help guide or some some other people can kind of give you some cues and feedback. Um, but really like being proficient in those lifts is going to take you so much further uh, it, you know, in, in the rest of your pursuits. And I, I love and MAPS Anabolic. It does a great job of building muscle and strength. It might be a little bit much in terms of like, you know, learning that new skill, adding a lot of volume on top of that and kind of like moving in that direction. That, that might be a good bridge is like, you know, those five core like uh, multi-joint movements, just really hyper-focus on those. Yeah, I think I think start in pre-phase, do that for four weeks first. Look, the uh, if I had to label or pick one thing that defines strength training, it wouldn't be weights. It would be rest period. So I want you, because this is going to be hard for you because you're used to OTF style training. OTF is cardio. All of it's cardio. They just throw weights at you and, and suspension trainers and other stuff, but it's all cardio. This is going to feel very different. The rest periods are what make this strength training. So you do your set, good form, decent intensity. Don't go to failure, but decent intensity. And then you rest. You rest for two minutes. You're literally sitting there uh, waiting in between sets. That's what's going to make it strength training. I'm so glad you said that. And a great way to help you stay in that mindset, and, I, and the, the app name is slipping me. Maybe Justin will remember by the time it, come, it gets to uh, finish my point, 
is I would be doing my deadlift and then I, and recording it with my phone. Like a bar path? Yeah, bar path. Thank you. And I would have the bar path app and I would I would video it and then I would sit down in my rest period and I, I'd be looking at my form, watching my technique and going, oh, it looks like my hips lifted a little much there. Oh, the bar came a little forward. And use that minute to three minutes minimum that you're resting between sets to really analyze your form and technique. Go set, prop the phone back up, go do another set again, go back, reassess it, see what you're doing. Like, like get, um, get excited about learning this craft and getting good at it. And who cares? Like to Justin's point, it maybe the whole workout ends up being just deadlifting that day. That's okay. That lift is so impactful for your, you're going to be your overall result and laying that foundation and getting good at that technique. I wouldn't even mind if that's what your workouts look like some days is where all you did was deadlift and shoulder press that day. That's all you did was barbell overhead yeah. press and deadlift that day, but you took your time and you focused on getting really good at it and working on it. Yeah. You're going to build that confidence and really Really, that's what it's all about and once you get that confidence then it's going to be a natural progression of like well i can keep adding weight and then you can feel your way through that because you know the goal obviously to keep like progressively overloading is going to be a completely different mindset shift and so that's what we're really kind of trying to hone in on what's exciting about this is if you do take the time to, to who cares about how heavy the barbell is right now get good at the technique and you start to go like okay this is say the you know, 10th time you've deadlifted at the, at the gym and you're like, oh, okay, this is starting to click for me. I can, I, and then you start stacking the weight on, watch how, watch how fast you get strong and watch how much the gains pile on when you get to that place, but don't rush to get there. Cause along the way, we're going to see results. You're going to get better, but really focus on just getting good at those core lifts that Justin's talking about and make that your main focus. Use anabolic as your, your base. Like this is a good a program, but don't be afraid to just spend a whole workout focusing on one of the two of those main lifts. Yeah. Okay. Cause I think, uh, you know, cause part of, part of what, what I think I caught myself in, cause I, I did, I kind of said, Oh, you know, I've been doing orange theory. I kind of know my, my way around a little bit. Like maybe I don't need preface. Let me just jump right in, right? No. So I did, right? I jumped right in, um, you know, to, to week one. And, you know, the first day, I wasn't really paying attention to myself. And I ended up doing pretty much exercises from both categories. And I wrecked myself, right? I was sore for, for two days after. And it was like, you know, okay. So, you know, I waited and I went back. And then, you know, I focused, you know, you know several days after. And I just focused on, on day two. And, you know, the, this, it felt really good for me. I felt like I had good form. Um, you know, I didn't get pain in anywhere that I shouldn't get pain. Um, but you know, of course it's always nice to have, you know, somebody, somebody look, but yeah, I think I've got a little bit of ego, right? Like how do I settle the ego yeah. to, you know, do I really need to go all the way back and really, really tell myself to slow down and go through pre-phase or should I just be slowing down? Because I, every day that I go in, I would say that I feel great. The lifts feel awesome. I feel like I can, I can deadlift. I feel like I can squat and, you know, I've done probably three workouts out of anabolic out of, you know, day one, day two foundation. And then it's just like, I just, I'm sore afterwards for too long. So it's like, I feel like I can put more weight and put more weight and put more weight. So it's like, do I lower the overall volume and kind of go for instead of six, you know, sets, do I do like three sets, but try to just stay in that rep range of one to four or do I lower weight and continue to focus on form? Either way is fine, but yeah. starting pre-phase anyway. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea of lowering the weight because you're going to benefit from the practice. So because we're wanting to get good at these squatting, deadlifting techniques, and you want to master that craft, reducing sets means less practice. So I would rather see you go lighter weight, but keep the practice up. And, and then again, get into the bar path app. I think it's a very valuable app to get into and just start to really geek out on your technique. I mean, still to this day, I'm like this. I always love to, when I'm home lifting, video my my lifts because I always want to see where's my technique yeah. at? Where can I tweak little things here and there? And get obsessed with that. Like get really focused on becoming a really great squatter and deadlifter, overhead presser. And, and instead of like, oh, I need to add more weight to the bar or I'm not sweating enough or I need to get more sore. Like that's kind of the mindset. That's the orange theory mindset of hammering the body, pushing, scoring more points, like get out of that mindset, be all about form technique, take your time, assess it with your videos, get into it like that. Yeah. It took me a long time. I mean, talking about that, it took me a long time to break away from the calorie burn mentality. Right. Yeah. Like it was like, Oh, I can burn a thousand calories. And I was like, after I, you know, I'm listening to this podcast, 
and doing a lot of other reading. It's like, man, calorie burn, it just doesn't matter, you know, right. uh, during the workout. Uh, and I, I kind of, I came across that with, you know, with food and diet as well. You know, I got my fitness pal at this point, you know, I'm really just trying to focus on when I log, I just log protein, right? I think I'm probably floating around 22, 2300 calories right now is probably what I'm floating at. And I'm, I kind of got up to about 205 since my, since my email. Um, but I, I've kind of, I think I've stayed about stable there and I have, I don't really win the weekends. Right. So, uh, but I'm not gaining weight. Right. So it's, it's, it feels like it's okay that I've kind of stable there and I'm shooting around 179 for protein. And I try to increase, I try to hit that and go over top of it. Yeah. But that was the other thing that I did when I used to diet that I've really took a shift on is last time I lost all that weight, dude, it was all Atkins bars and protein shakes and a little bit of chicken. So I've been trying to, to not use any of that. And I think the one of the only things I really, you know, outside of, you know, eating out some a little bit here, really my biggest processed food right now, and I don't know if we consider it processed would be creatures of habit, right? That's the major processed food that, you know, I consume every day, but it struggles for me because I can't eat eggs in the morning. So I usually have, I usually choose to do that since I usually eat. That's meat fine. I love, I love that. Bro. That's fine. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. You're on the right track. Just start pre-phase, give yourself some time, rest in between sets, focus on getting stronger and it, it's going to work out for you. I'd love to hear where you're at, Tim, in the next like three to four months. So circle back with this if you can. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely would. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been, I've been knocking around the idea of, of getting into the forum and, and I actually just ordered, um, I just ordered after the Stephen Cabral episode. I was like, man, I, I haven't been able to, to tolerate eggs for about, about 12 years. And, uh, we had sushi the other night and I think it had spicy mayo on it. Well, mayo is egg, right? And now I think that it's gotten to the point where now I'm like, well, now I can't have mayo. Right. So mm -hmm. that really, with that episode was, was key. And I know we you guys talk about it all the time. And I figure if I listen to it enough, right, it'll eventually sink in. <laughs> and I don't remember if it was Adam or Justin. That was, at one point, I was like, I'll say it a different way and it's going to click. Right. So. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Hey, yeah, definitely do that. Well, I, mean, I tell you what, Doug will throw you in the forum too. So we'll put you in the forum. So you're in there and we have, we have connection with you. So he'll, he'll send you access to that. Thanks for calling. You in, got Tim. it, man. Right on, guys. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, you too, Jim. Yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what's your favorite thing to say about group training? <laughs> yeah. They need to die. It, so. Yeah, it just uh, well, it just is not. It got them in there, right? It's again, it was yeah. sort of I mean, a that's stepping the, stone. That's the argument. But there. the transition to go from it's that tough. to traditional strength training, you feel like. You're not doing anything. Yeah, no, you weigh it out because now you have to sort of uh, reverse engineer that mentality and completely do a new playbook. Yeah, but it'll yeah. work. It'll work yeah. for him. He just has to, it's the mental part that's the, hard. The, the, you know, the the sad part, the positive thing I have to say about Orsay is it's a great business. So it's smart because it, right. it gets a lot of people. I mean, that's the part that is smart about orange theory. The, the, the modality of training for most people is just, it's just not ideal. You know, the only other person I see, like I love, like Brendan is a, a person who I think can do it right. You're an athlete. You're already in great shape. He doesn't need to change body composition doing that kind of athletic training yeah. all the time. Sure. It's that's kind of fine. maintenance at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Sure. Yeah. It's fine. But somebody who's trying to make body composition change, I just, it's a terrible strategy. Mm -hmm. It's not a long term. It's not a winning strategy. And just because you can show me, somebody who has lost a bunch of weight, well, show me that person in yeah. three to five years. If the years. value of the workout is how hard it is, there's a problem. That's yeah. a red flag. Right. Yep.